So in my last video, I talked about my thoughts and emotional outbursts uh, for the movie adaptation of Percy Jackson. We are now getting a TV series adaptation with Disney Plus, which I have really high hopes for. And I am going to, in this video, talk about what I am the most excited to see adapted as well as kind of what I want to see. So top 10 things that I would like to see in this adaptation. And the first thing on this list is just to take their time. This is the perfect series to not feel like you need a bunch of crash, boom, bang action. This series is full of action, but it doesn't have to be around every corner. We don't have to rush things. And that's a really big deal to me because a big part of what makes this series so great is the character dynamics within it. The sheer wittiness and sarcasm and sass that these characters are absolutely filled with will give us enough to latch on to those slower scenes and to enjoy them and make them not feel boring. But the dynamics of found family that we get in this series and the intense close relationships that the characters have, the individual unique personalities that each of not only our leads but the side characters get is something that I really want to see explored. I don't want these characters to end up feeling generic because we're cutting out core um, humor and personality traits and individual struggles that they go through throughout the series. I really want to take the time to give them their unique personalities and explore them and let them have really um, intimate, close friendships that we get to build on as the series goes on and that end up making those really intense, exciting, action-packed scenes so much more, uh, emo ha have so much more emotional payoff because the sacrifices that they make actually mean something because we saw them get built up. Next on the list is complex emotions. Again, one of the best things about the series is the complex emotions that are explored from Annabeth and her issues with her st with her dad and her stepmom, um, with Clarice and the pain that she goes through in the end of the series when someone that she loves is so horribly, when we find out that someone that she loves is so horribly harmed. All of the kids feeling abandoned by their god parents because some of them don't even claim them, let alone actually visiting them or speaking to them very often or really lending a hand in their lives and in their trials. They feel so abandoned by these people that they're supposed to be honoring. This is not a series that just has funny, witty, exciting moments. It's a series that really reflects on some real issues that kids face and grow up with, as well as some not real issues that kids never face and grow up with. But it's all explored in such a grounded way that I think is so deep and I don't wanna miss out on that. I don't want to cut through those emotions for the sake of making it more thrilling and exciting. I need those slow down moments. Speaking of slow down moments, I need a slow burn romance in this one. In the movie, it was like, I just met you, I've got strong feelings for you. By the end of the first movie, we almost kiss, but it's like a cute little flirty moment, which I get that that's easier to do, but people just love their slow burns and Percy and Annabeth, like I said in the last video, they go from enemies to friends to lovers. It goes from this kind of antagonistic sort of relationship, especially on Annabeth's part, and this, this friction because of Annabeth's faults, because she needs to prove herself, and because she needs Percy to be who she, who she thinks he is. Their personality is just not quite fitting together at first, and then developing into this close, deep bond where they rely on each other, and then eventually into this really, beautiful romance that's just starting to blossom. The scene where he, uh, when he dips himself himself into that pool, uh, like, like Achilles did, and he gets coded in the invincibility thing, but he has a weak spot. That scene where he tells Annabeth where his weak spot is and they just hold hands for a minute. Um, the underwater kiss, their their banter back and forth, their sacrifices for each other. Uh, even the friction when 
Rachel comes into the scene and Percy is kind of dealing with um, with his feelings for her as well as his feelings for Annabeth. And Annabeth is dealing with jealousy when he goes off to Calypso's island. There's so many really authentic things that they have to work through. And then as well, Annabeth's feelings for Luke. Is it more of a brother relationship? Is it more of a romantic thing? Percy has to deal with not being sure how Annabeth feels about him and how strong, how much she cares about him. And I just don't want it to be like long stares across the room or like, oh no, our hands touched a little bit. Oh, that was fun, but don't let it happen again. I just don't want these cheap chemistry things. I want the depth that we get in the story. Character arcs in the movie. Oh my goodness. In the movie, there's so many things that are cut from our characters, not just their personalities, but also their backstories. Like for instance, like I said in the last video, Luke says his dad is a jerk and he's never met him. Were we just gonna bypass Luke's entire backstory with his mom and what has made him so bitter towards the gods for not acknowledging them and not stepping in in their lives when they needed them? Are we just gonna pretend that entire theme that arcs throughout the entire story and is a huge part of Luke's whole arc and he's one of the most important characters in this series? We're just gonna pretend that's not fair. Pers uh, Luke and Annabeth have like no relationship in the movie and I just, I want their entire backstory to be explored. I want them and Talia and them all running away as kids and being their own found family and, and looking out for each other and growing up to, f with each other and their found family. I want their whole backstory. I want a flashback showing everything for them. I want Annabeth's extreme turmoil over the fact that some someone that she considers a, a brother, someone who she's gone through so much with is now betraying them all. I want that scene where Annabeth says, family Luke, I want all of that. I want Clarice to soften, to go from being a bully and an antagonist and someone that is easy to dislike to someone that she's become one of my favorite characters, someone that sacrifices for others and that has such a genuine heart and pain that she's going through and who, when someone betrays her, and, and they regret it, she says, they died a hero. And this is the most important thing. I want all of Luke's story. I want him to go from being this charming, wonderful guy that we like to the betrayal, to seeing what caused him to get to this point, and then his regrets and his arc at the end, don't you dare take away from me that he is the one that the prophecy was about. If you take that from me, I will die. Number whatever number I'm on in this video, the underworld. I don't think the movie did a terrible job with the underworld, but the underworld was my favorite part of book one, and I would love to see us spend a lot more time there. I want us to be able to really see what all of the stuff that we saw in the books, and even more. I want to face the Cerberus. I want to see the different categories of hell that people can go into. I want to see the dynamics between Hades and Persephone, and not the way it was done in the movie. And I want to see Hades' humanity. I want to see that he is not just a mindless villain, but that there's a lot of depth to him and he mostly just wants to be left alone. Also on the track of characters, there's a lot of side characters that I would like to see. Now, I'm a big proponent of adaptations are going to cut characters. They are going to take one character that had a unique, specific role in the, in the book and they're going to give that role to another character because you just can't, you just can't have it all. And I think that that's okay. I think it's all right to kind of mash two characters together as long as it's done well. But there are certain characters that I really don't want to see gone. And I would actually really love to see early on. Like when we go to the casino and um, and our characters kind of get lost in that in that hullabaloo, I would love to see Nico and Bianca there. And we don't know, or at least we might be able to guess, but people who haven't read the books don't know that they're significant. It's just like some random side characters, but we get to see them interacting. And and then later on, those same actors come back as them in book three. Speaking of Nico, moving on to number, I don't know, in this video, the next thing that I really, really wanna see is Nico going from being this innocent child 
to his unraveling after his sister dies, being so bitter and angry, trying to get her back, um, being willing to turn to the dark side because of all that he's lost and because he finally got out of that casino and all he got from that is losing the one family member he had left. His complicated relationship with his dad, Hades, and their complicated dynamic as Nico is pleading to him and Hades realizes that he really does care about his son, going from saying, if only Bianca had lived and you had died, she would be better. Going from that to, I'm sorry I was a bad dad, let me try to be better. Next thing I can't wait for is The Hunters. I'm so excited to see the way they adapt to this. I'm so excited to see their dynamics and um, the weird old timey way that they speak. I'm excited to see that sacrifice in book three. I'm excited to see yet another sacrifice. Oh man, the hunters, they got, oh, they, they had it rough. I'm excited to see what Artemis is like and her dynamic with them because she's one of the rare instances where she really interacts with people. Granted, she makes them immortal before they can join her hunt, but re regardless, she reaches out to demigods and says, would you like to be a part of my family? And it's not exactly the same dynamic because they're not all her children, but, or uh, maybe none of them. Yeah, none of them. None of them are her children because she has that celibacy thing. But regardless, she reaches out to mortals and says, be a part of my family. That's such a unique and interesting dynamic that we don't see with any other god. And I would love to see that. I can't wait to see that play out. Next is the world building. I love the world building in Percy Jackson. I love how much Rick expanded on it and made it really unique to him while still being loyal to the source material. I love how much he integrated into real, into real life and made it feel like it could actually be a part of our real world. I love the way he did that and I would love to see that really heavily explored in the story. I want to see the cabins. I want to see what the inside of the cabins look like and how unique and different each one is. I want to see um, the different monsters that we have to face off against and um, I want, I really want to see the labyrinth and all the different creatures that we face in there. I want to see the mist and have that explained as to why there are monsters in the world and demigods God's running around and lightning bolts being stolen. I want that explained instead of just ignored. This is such a unique world that Rick created within our world and he made it so tangible and so unique. And I said unique already and I loved it. I don't, I want that to be explored very heavily. I want to see it all. I want it all to be explained there. I think it's one of the greatest assets of the series and I I don't want it to be skipped over. And finally, the last thing on this list and my the thing that I'm the most excited about except for the Luke arc. That's really important to me. But the next thing that the last the second the most the next most important thing to me is the right your wrongs at the end. When Percy, when they have the final battle, when they have the big epic war that they go through and the dust settles and Percy is standing before the gods and they say, okay, tell us what you want. And Percy, he, he what he tells them is that you have to right your wrongs. You need to start acknowledging your children. Every child has to be claimed and uh, he, he mentions Calypso specifically. You need to undo that and set her free. Percy goes from being a kid who never wanted to be a demigod and who feels completely overwhelmed in this world and who is just running to keep his head above water. Doesn't make sense, bad analogy. He's this kid that's completely an underdog and that would have died a hundred times over were it not for his friends that supported him and that their unique abilities mixed with his were just enough to get him by. He goes from that to being someone who's worthy to stand before the gods and make a request of them. And he boldly tells them, you need to right your wrongs. And standing in the place of so many people that have felt abandoned by their parents and people who have been harmed by the God's hasty decisions and, and, and they've never had to account for that. And Percy standing before them and saying, you're doing things wrong and it's time for you to start doing it right. And that he has won enough 
honor in their eyes that he that he is substantial enough to them, important enough to them, that they don't just smite him right there, that they listen and agree to his terms. This is massive. This is huge. And it's one of the best things that happens in the series. There's a lot of things I want to see in this adaptation. Mostly I'm holding it loosely because I don't want to say I want things one-to-one. -one. I want every scene to be a a adapted perfectly. I want every character to be exactly like they were in the books. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hold the directors to that creative chokehold. I want them to be free to make changes and, and to explore different options while still honoring the source material. And I I really think they will since Rick is so excited about it. So I'm excited to see what changes they'll make. I'm excited to see what things they'll stay loyal to, just as long as the core of the story and the characters and some of the most essential character arcs are honored. Okay, that's probably enough. I would love to hear your list. What are some things that you would like to see from the movie? What are some scenes or some characters that you're the most excited to be adapted? And what are the things that are the most important to you to see done well? I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I post vlog videos on my other channel on Thursdays, and really soon I'm gonna start posting even more over there. I'll see you again soon, bye.